You are now listening to For All Nerds Show, a podcast about geek and pop culture from the perspective of people of color. For All Nerds is hosted by DJ Ben Amin and Tatiana Keen Jones. For All Nerds Show is a member of the Loudspeakers Network, where we will always say rest in peace to our founder, Combat Jack. For All Nerd Show is powered by our listeners. Everything we do from our podcasts, live events, our website are all independently funded. Please continue to support us through our Patreon page at patreon.com slash For All Nerds. Welcome to For All Nerds. And what's up, y'all? And welcome to another episode of the Four All Nerds Show. The voice of the Urban Geek, the podcast where we discuss geek and pop culture from the perspective of the people of color. And as always, in the captain's chair, it's your boy, DJ Ben Amin, a.k.a. A Baby Max, Quantum Leech, Premier Peter Parker, Chris Radnorock. Ben Dick Grayson, Energy, Buzz, Ouchie, Dr. Stephen Dr. Stephen Slane, the Sorcerer <laughs> Supreme, Clientel, Black Black Goliath, YOLO Baggins, here, back in the spaceship once again. Very good. Thank you very much. Hey, baby, baby, Max. Up. That's one of my best favorite ones, by the way. Yeah, that's another one we got to put that, up on That's it, another on one. It. Yeah, that's another one. That's another yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. That's another one. Another one. <laughs> hey, baby, baby, Max. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. It is great. All right. And as always, I'm joined by Tatiana King, the Grand Duchess of Tech, also known as J Prince of All Saiyans, Ned Slanders, Glorilla, Grod, Flex Luthor, Good Grief Karga, Lambo Calrissian, Gucci Mandalorian, The Book of Ashanti, Tesseract Thompson, Tatiana Kang, The Conqueror, Trash Ketchum, The Little Mermaid, and The Ting of the North. I think Good Grief Karga is another one. Yeah. You know, to, to pay respect to the man, you know, we yeah. might have to do it. Yeah. 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 We might get sued on that one, though. You know. I mean, we, we get sued on most character. of them. I mean, pretty much, you know, it's like. <laughs> I mean, Beyonce certainly took her shirt down at one time, so, you no, know. No problem. With no, no problem. problem. <laughs> Shout out to Renaissance, too. You know what I mean? Can't wait to yeah. hear it. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> we won't do that one again. <laughs> I'm happy she's letting my song go, like. Shout out to everybody who's uh, following me on Bandcamp. Make sure you mm-hmm. head over to BigDJEnergy.com as well. Yeah. Leave your email right there. That's the newness. That's that new hotness. BigDJEnergy.com. You like that. Well, yeah. my thing is you're not like basically playing her song over again. You're sampling it. You're interpolating. Like you're doing it a lot of different ma- things. It doesn't. No, she <laughs> let that go. That's fine. Like you saw just for like, think of people like, what's the name that got big? What's his name that got big during pandemic where... He would take these songs. Um, yes. It's know? a fine line, let me tell you. It is a, a fine line. I, I will say it's a fine line. But you're being creative with it. I, 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 all right. Like, and also, Beyonce frequent, especially since Renaissance, she's always done this, but especially since Renaissance, she releases the acapellas and the vocals for the express purpose of doing things like this. So, and yet her label has mm. different things to say about it. Like, Long story short, what I've learned is if I put that Beyonce mix in a mix, like that's longer than 15 minutes okay. so that it can't be monetized, they'll let it go. But when I upload that song by itself so people can listen to it on SoundCloud, fuck out of here. They it's, said you're not monetizing. Yeah, my it's voice. it's immediately like you can't even put it on private. That shit is eliminated. So they it's don't a, have <laughs> No, her bots. One thing about um, bees bots, okay? We call, literally hashtag bees bots. They work motherfucking overtime and yeah. when i say they work morning noon and night 3065 days a, you know what i'm saying like i it's, it's unbelievable how fast they will snatch it so unbelievable it's like how prince was shout out yeah. prince back in the day because he was the same way Woo, but yeah being mm. that make sure you head to biddjenergy.com so you can get all of my new hotness everything i'm dropping you know musically yes artistically, all that stuff, you know, because you can also pre-order Hendrix, Purple yes. Haze. I meant to add that as one of my AKAs, author of Hendrix, Purple Haze. And, you know, Bid DJ Energy, you can get it there. Or you can just, you know, type Hendrix Purple Haze graphic novel into whatever you want to right now. It'll pop mm-hmm. right up. You can pre-order it for yourself. There you go. You need to get that in your life. And most importantly, when you go to BigDJEnergy.com, make sure... 
you sign up for the guest list, okay? Mm -hmm. You want free shit, sign up for the guest list. You will not be disappointed. Put in that email, and that way you can keep track of everything that's going on and just automatically be eligible to get cool shit. So make sure you do that. Yeah, most definitely. All right, all right. Now that we've talked about ourselves enough, you know, it is the For All Nerd show, you know? Yes. I I mean, we are, you know, creators ourselves, so we got to big up these things, like, you know, I'm really proud. Like, oh, that I do got to say that because uh, as you hear this, by the time you hear this, we've released uh, four pages of art by the great Tom Mandrake with colors by Justin Prokovich. Mm. So you can make sure you check that out. They're mm. online. They're on my Instagram, DJ Ben I mean, on For All Nerds. You'll see them on there. It's crazy. Some of the most beautiful art from the book. Uh, one of Tom's double page splashes got released. It's just absolutely beautiful it's completely contents free no spoilers because there's no letters there's nothing to tell you about what these images mean but when i tell you there's a lot there is a in one of the images there is so much story so much information you can pick it apart see what you can find all the easter eggs you know you know you don't know what it's about but you know just check it out mm-hmm. shout out to tom mandrake shout out to justin on the colors for they both did the damn thing on this book and it's dropping you know july 31st very soon see me at san diego comic-con look for me at dragon con probably all the cons all the cons if you got a podcast that you're you know want me on i'll be down to be on it let me know i'm ready to do interviews i'm ready to talk about hendrix purple haze let's get it done excellent oh i actually do have a a podcast for you to be on i'll tell you about it after these messages, um, the first message is X Men ninety seven. Mm. That trailer drop that was exciting today, at least for me particularly. Oh. Oh. I know it was for you too, but yeah, especially for me. That was the reason why for me because that was mm-hmm. my entryway into not necessarily comic books but comics mm. and learning about Marvel and these characters. Like, because I still didn't read a comic book until many years later, but mm-hmm. this was my entry point. Fox Kids. Yeah. And that, go ahead. No, you go ahead. Keep going. Okay. I want to hear from your perspective. As a child, where in hindsight, I was probably too young to be watching this shit, and you mentioned it today in Twitter, I realized how dramatical the dramatics were so high. Like, I've always known, like, realized that storm was dramatic. The winds of the east and the storms of the south, come bless me. You know, all that shit, right? Yes. But everything about it is a giant soap opera. And yes, it's all derived from the comic book. But again, a young child that has nothing, has no idea about the comics or how these things work, you're just watching this like, this is my soap opera. These are my stories. As a kid, those were my stories. You know, you go in mm-hmm. grandma's room, she watches stories. Those are my stories. Mm. And it was, uh, listen, that, that love triangle, that, that's probably one of the most, that's the first and most classic love triangle I've ever learned. Jean Grey, Scott Summers, and uh, Bub himself, Wolverine. Yeah. There, yeah, there you go. Um, I, I was a little older, obviously, when it dropped. And I remember it like, I remember it like you remember it. Well, no, not like you remember it. More like where it was like, I remember all that other stuff. Like the storm. I remember mm-hmm. Wolverine, the first time he showed up. Like there was a, I don't think it's in the pride of the X-Men one, but there's like this pilot for it. Where he has a Australian accent instead of a Canadian accent. Who? Wolverine. Wolverine? Yeah, it's hilarious. Fuck out of here. No thank yeah. you. Yeah. You sound I know. like Chris Hemsworth? They fixed it later, obviously. Ugh. And you know, it's the classic one that you know and love. And I just remember all that stuff. But then I was like, yo, I gotta rewatch this because whenever I look at it on Disney Plus, I always look at some of the titles. I'm like, yo, they did a lot of storylines. So I'm like, yo, let me read Lots re-read. of storylines. Yeah, and a lot of characters. I didn't remember a them lot. introducing and stuff. So I was like, let me rewatch this. So yeah. I started on season one. And one, they jumped so heavy. The the Etchman timeline from the comics is just all convoluted on here. Like, they have Sabretooth at the mansion in, like, the first episode. Ben, it's worse in the, in the cartoon. At least when no, I get wh- Fox Kids times, it was worse. Wh- it was, what, out yeah, what, what it was I'm done saying out of order, too. Yeah, oh, that, yeah, but well, that's even worse. But what I'm saying is, like, when you watch it in order, it's st- it's telling a cohesive story throughout it, but mm-hmm. they don't go from, like, X-Men 1 to X-Men 200. It's like they might have a storyline from X-Men 205 that they throw when in. X-Men 137 is happening. Because, like, the Dark Phoenix stuff is X-Men 137. That happens in the season one, I think, season two, mm-hmm. something like that. Like season, but two, they, like season two. 
they get through mad shit. They like Genosha mm-hmm. is introduced in the first four episodes, yep. I think. Yeah, it's super and Myra early. and all these people. Yeah, and I didn't know that because you know Genosha in the comics trumps way after the Phoenix Saga. I, Phoenix I well dead. Shit. Yeah, well See, dead by then. But you know, like I said, I have no context as a child, so mm-hmm. like I'm learning about like that's how that's literally like when. From my beginnings of, yep. of learning about everything Marvel and X-Men and all this other stuff, this is where my knowledge stems from, right? So like you said, learning about Genosha, learning about the the different philosophies between mm-hmm. Magneto and Professor X. Again, the love triangle I mentioned. Uh, Cable, Bishop, like it, all those it, sagas. The fucking, as you said, the Dark Phoenix saga, like all of that stuff. Is Sinister La flamboyant Madre. in it? Huh? Is Sinister flamboyant in it? I want to say, hold on. Hold on, let me... Because, all right, there's... there's, Like, Kieran Gillen really wrote Sinister, and I think other people did, but he really wrote Sinister now, and he's turned him into this super flamboyant, always worried about his clothes, his extra type character. I feel like he was. Let me double check. Yes, yes, he was. And that comes a little later, you know, in the... With the comics. And that's why when I'm watching this cartoon, it's so interesting to me how much X-Men lore is, like, Kind of because of this cartoon, right? Like in the comics, the whole love triangle between Wolverine, Cyclops, and Gene was kind of hinted at. And Claremont later developed it, but it still wasn't like this big thing. It and this n- huge in man, the nigga, in the first episode, this it nigga. It's, it was it's, the it's, one thing they was arguing about constantly. Constantly. That, like, constantly. I was, like I was tweeting you today when that nigga, when Gene was like, Cyclops was waiting for me there to go see a movie and Wolverine had been sliced <laughs> up by a saber tooth and so she was checking on him. She's like, Cyclops is waiting for me. I am too, Gene. It was- no, for real. Ah! Like, I mean, I learned very early on what a simp was. Scott oh, Summers. Man. Oh, so, don't hate on my man, Slim. I, honestly, that's where my hate of Scott Summers stems from. And that's okay, why I'm at, I I'm at to keep watching and see how much simp. of a sucker they make him. Because so he's, far, he's, he's been kind of gangster. He's been gangster in the field, but a sucker in love. He's a leader, right? In the field, yeah. he's a leader, but everywhere else, he's a simp. And yeah, I but never liked the nigga. Numbers. Yeah, that's I, him. I, I never, I know, but I never liked the man. And even to this day, I think that has biased my mm. worldview of him. It doesn't matter what version of him. I'm like, I don't like that nigga. Every time I see him, because see, I'm, I'm just like, he's a simp, and it's also just like when, I, especially as a kid, I was like, I'd rather Gene be with with Wolverine, but yeah. See, because I was the simp, you know, I wanted her to be with Scott. But uh, Scott was soft. But ass. but as a grown man, I like Scott with Emma, and okay. I like Gene. I like what they're. Well, I like I like what they were doing in Krakoa, where it was Gene, Scott, and uh, Wolvie is kind of just an open couple, a throuple. Damn. I kind of like that. That was interesting, <laughs> you know. But I liked I liked Scott with Emma. That was that was an interesting relationship for me. As a kid, it was Scott and Gene, of course. You know, I was in love with you know I was in love with Gene, so it was like. Yeah. Nah, nah, my man's Logan. He was always the man from Jump. So, oh, yeah, yeah, no, and it, never the biggest Wolverine fan. He, he was yeah. my, he was man from Jump. And then also that me watching that, that also led to me watching things like the um, Iron Man cartoon. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's, you know, that's why, as you said, like you said, like he was like third string at the time, but like, you know, that was the one I knew. I knew who Iron Man was, I knew who Tony. Tony was, and I knew about his alcoholism and all this other stuff. You know, that's what I'm saying. It's like shit from the 90s. They didn't care that you they were didn't. like eight. Like they were yeah. just like, oh nah. They was like, you gonna learn about alcoholism. You gonna learn about people's problems. That's you gonna crazy. grow up. With, I'm about with to dramatics. watch that next, probably. Well, I, I don't know. I'm I'm going no, through. He them was all. down bad. Tony was down bad in that cartoon, my nigga. You need to like it's. And I told you I likened it to watching such shit like Gargoyles. Dramatics. Everything mm-hmm. was just a. Everything's stories, you know. These are the kids again. You, 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 seven, eight, nine years old watching your stories, and these are and to me, it also like it's the it, I'm saying the jokes about it being so serious, but also to me, it was actually really good because it you can claim that they just assume that you would get it, you would learn. Like you know how sometimes they infantilize children, and mm. what I mean is like trying to say like even at eight years old, oh, you don't understand what love, the concept of love, or the concept of hard concepts that. Yes, there are adult concepts because you may not get the full breadth of it, but just to say that you understand the basics. A lot of times nowadays, they they dumb it down so much that they was like, oh, this kid is not going to understand it. And I feel like it's not necessarily fair. Um, uh, kids are smarter than you think. And kids 
grasp and latch on to concepts much more than people know. So I kind of also like when you have this type of entertainment that just let you one assume that you understood, and if not, you're gonna kind you just kind of learned about it, and they didn't say, "Oh, you're too young for this." You just, you just they just roll with it, and. You can argue whether or not that was a good idea, but <laughs> I learned a lot. I learned a mm-hmm. lot about relationships and random things. And and me, I would ask the questions too to parents and stuff like that and older, you know, siblings. And so Yeah, but well, see, it's interesting because like I had the same, I mean, same but different, right? Because I remember I was exposed to the cartoon that fucked my head up as a kid was Robotech. Because we would have Robotech on, it would always be on on the weirdest hours, and everything, but you would catch it and you know, um, my man Rick Hunter and uh, what's my man's name? Roy Fokker gets murdered. You know what I mean? Gets murdered. And he's in a racial relationship. His girl's black. And he dies. And he's like the hero. You know, I you love You got to learn thing. about death, man, as a kid. You early. Sometimes. You know, early. So I had the same. And then, of course, you know, Optimus Prime catching that hot one was another one for me where, you know, my whole heart dropped through my robot. chest. You got it. Fam. Robots die every day, B. No, fam. No, they don't. <laughs> that was see. That was like that was the wild. That was the wild difference. Cause like X-Men, you know, second episode, Morph catches a hot one, dunned off. So you're used to it. Transformers was like three seasons straight. No one catches anything. No one. Every damn day after it's school, a game. It's a no one game. catches anything. The movie comes out, nigga, and ten niggas that you loved catch it in the first twenty minutes. The, the first time I seen the movie, I was late and I missed half of the niggas got murdered. I sat through the thing and watched it again, not knowing that these niggas were all dying, you know, in the beginning. And that, that's why I hadn't seen them in the movie. And then when I watched it again, I was like, you know what, Ben? I mean, that response is why Michael Bay killed Jazz because of you, fam, because of how you felt. <laughs> fam. Said, Let's kill somebody you like. Pop. <laughs> it was it was way. I mean, that, that was cool, but it was way, man. There was nothing. My man, I think it's Ironhide. Mm. Um, he catches a shot to the chest and smoke comes out his mouth. Nick. <laughs> That's kind of harsh to see as a child. I'm like, hey. <laughs> the nigga's eyes turn red and smoke pours out the nigga's mouth. And he's like, oh. and he lays it down. <laughs> and that's it. And this nigga is like, you know, the little iron, like this, the, you know, he's like, doo, 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 or it's brawn. I think it was brawn the smoke comes out of his mouth. Or, or then the other nigga's like, crawling to Megatron's feet and trying to, you know, something. And he says something about, like, what a futile jester. And then shoots the nigga in the face. See, I like Megatron. So I loved it. all of the carnage, Trust. Megatron is start Actually, when I was, like I said, I started with Beast Wars. And when I was yeah. watching that, Starscream was my favorite. Yeah. So, like, all the treacherous shit that was happening, I was like, yeah. Like, it, it was the just, nigga it was a game. Tur- Have you seen the Transformers movie? No. Okay, you need to watch it at some point. From one, the animation holds up. The voice acting is incredible. And the nigga Starscream gets turned to dust. Ha! Huh. <laughs> yes, no. He'll I scream. I scream. Oh, he does. But I scream. You scream? Out. And then, it, then you sound I like you, so, you're very scarred by all of this. No, I was so happy for that one. That was, I screamed of joy. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> it's hilarious. The nigga Starstream is getting um, coronated as the new king of the Decepticons. And Megatron, who's been turned to Galvatron, rolls up, you know, to the ceremony, flies up, transforms, lands in front of him, and says, well, what is this coronation? Spare me, spare me this mockery of a coronation or this mockery of something. <laughs> and Starstream's just like, Megatron, is that you? Nigga says, here's a hint. Turns into the gun and turns this nigga to dust. <laughs> oh, he turns, he, 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 uh, he what's it called? Turn, he, he, Galvatron, you know, is a cannon. Yeah, he transforms into a cannon. So he's like, here's a hint. Transforms into the big cannon. Transform, thank you. Yeah, and shoots his nigga Starscream, and Starscream turns to dust. Nigga, can you imagine, like, in the theater, you know what I mean? And it's, Starscream um, dies every day, B. I don't know. And, but see, at this point, you're not used to none of that shit. And it's, uh, is it Leonard Nimoy who's doing the voice of Galvatron? So it's like, oh, dead ass? Hint. Yeah. Like, oh, wow. you know, it's amazing, yeah. Fucking, what's his name? Um, Orson Welles is Galvatron. It's like his last role. I mean, not Galvatron, a uh, Unicron, the big planet. Okay. But yeah, Leonard Nimoy is Galvatron, and he's destroying it. Like, here's a hint. It's fucking hilarious, nigga. Like, you watch that on YouTube after after the, you know, when we go to break, maybe. Because it's fucking comedy. <laughs> that here's a hint is, like, one of the funniest lines ever. Like, nigga said, Megatron, is that you? 
Here's a hint. Like, no, <laughs> I don't think it's gonna hit. But it's not gonna hit the same way. I mean, I'm gonna laugh at everything. But I laughed, nigga. I cried in the theater. It's the funniest <laughs> shit ever. Nigga said, "Here's a hint," and blows this nigga to dust. And then stands up and it's like, anyone else got anything to say? And they're like, what's his name again? Listen, Galvatron. that's why I say you can question the the <laughs> the strength, or not even the strength, you can question if it's right to have children watch stuff like this. But it's also just like certain concepts I like, I just appreciate. And maybe because I was also reading at a really high level anyway. Oh, yeah, so I was reading, like I was reading Octavia Butler and stuff like that. Yeah, so same. Watching stuff like that, I was just like, you know, it was it was just, it was good for me. It was good for me. I mean, I, I watched about Predator kids, at like 10, you know, 12. So it, 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 it was all bad for me. But I'm saying that's really bad. <laughs> but it was amazing. You know, okay. it was fucking amazing. Right. Come on, but man. So all, that to, all, that to, all that to say, we are excited. Um, I know they, a lot of the, there's a lot of returning voice actors, right? From the original. Um, yep. Wolverine sounded different though. Cyclops, I think they got a new cat because everybody was hyped over it that. It sounds like To me, it my like, X-Men. But yeah, that he sounds a little different, but close enough to original voice where I didn't really, mm-hmm. I didn't really um, detect anything wrong. I detected something off with Wolverine, and when I say mm. off, I just mean off from my memory of what he sounded like. On I, I've been watching it again, but I'm ha- once because by the time this comes up, I'm gonna watch the whole thing, so okay. I'll have a different view of it. The animation difference was immediately throwing me off, especially because I've just been watching an old one. And it's a marked difference of improvement. And I have to get used to the new style because I'm used to the old style. And I like the old style. But, okay. you know, I also like I like the new, too. So we'll see. H- how do you feel about it being Mo- Mohawk? Storm? No, come on. Come on, baby. Like, come on. <laughs> like, what? He said, come on, baby. <laughs> Nigga, this is like, you want to talk about your childhood. And you, like, I was in love with Jean Grey. But when I saw Mohawk Storm, it was like, oh. See, my childhood is long hair storm, not oh, Mohawk God. Storm. No, so, Mohawk Storm is I, I, life. Nigga. I'm used like, to flowing tresses. No. I'm, I'm, I'm used to um, silk press storms. So. Mohawk Storm showing up and Kitty being all mad like a little bitch. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's hilarious. Mohawk Storm shows up and Kitty is all like, how could you do it? You know, like, how could you cut yeah. your hair and show I, up in like this? And she's I like, wonder if Jubilee's going to be just as one nerfed and if two, she's going to be just as annoying because she was wild annoying to me. You know, she when... becomes a vampire in the comics at one point. Damn, that's fucked up. I want to know, are they going to do Krakoa? Could they? Why they're... is one of the few Asian X-Men turn into a vampire? Oh, men of mad Asian X-Men. No, no, it's I not... mean, the the main ones that I would see on, on a regular daily basis on the show. How do they, they turn her into a vampire? Well, she also has For a what? child who eventually becomes a dragon, you know, if you want. Okay, other things well, there it is. You know. All right. Life there happens in the X-Men, baby. Like, Life you know. happens, okay. <laughs> life be life to the X-Men. Turn, turn wow. it into a vampire is pretty, you know, low on the list. You can't be like, oh, my God, they did the Asian character wrong. Wow. Niggas take L's in the X-Men fam. Equal Jean opportunity. Gray has died, like, several times now. Equal opportunity L's, understood. <laughs> yeah. Nope. I feel a little better, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Her child was a dragon at one point. Oppression so. for everyone. Got yes. it. Okay. They're mutants. It's a hard knock life, fam. You know? <laughs> Like, play the song. Uh, <laughs> Take the bass out. <laughs> Listen, in more in more Marvel news, on Valentine's Day, they released some imagery, some some really cool drawings, too. I liked it. Of the new cast of Marvel's first family, the Fantastic Four. Mm-hmm. So, leading the cast is Reed Richards. We have Pedro Pascal, our boy, uh, mm-hmm. the Mandalorian. We also have Vanessa Kirby, who will be Sue Storm. Vanessa Kirby, she plays one of my favorite characters, Alana, in Mission Impossible. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I just like how she moves in that. Oh, we also have it. we also have Joseph Quinn from Stranger Things. He's going to be Johnny Storm, Human Torch. Young, young Robert Downey Jr. Yeah. And this, I love this casting. I was like, holy shit, this makes so much sense. Evan, or Yvonne Moss, Backrock. He is going to be Ben Grimm, the thing. Cousin from Cousin the Bear. Cousin from the Bear. Like, that does not make the most fucking sense in the world. I, it's funny because that's the thing. Like whenever people say, "Who would you cast?" I'm never the one who be like, "Oh, this person, that person." But Marvel has great casting, and this is I'm like 90 percent all the way with it. And yeah, I mean, I love that nigga. Like the Forks episode of The Bear is one of my favorite episodes of television of all time. He's one of my favorite characters of all time. His growth, like I'm b- about to tear up just talking about him. Like his growth. And his acting, um, he's also has a quick arc on the first season of Andor. So that's, I know I've seen him in something else before all this, but that's where I first started watching him. And his arc on Andor is that of a bastard. 
So mm-hmm. it took me a second to even start liking him on Bear because he's so good as a bastard yeah. on Bear. But then he became, like, on Bear, he's one of my favorite people ever. He's, yeah, Exactly, exactly. No. But I, I, oh, I agree with you. They just did extremely well. I mean, I'm happy about all the casting. I think it, it works. But I'm, mm-hmm. I'm really particularly happy about the thing. And, mm-hmm. you know, I actually, you know, back in the, the, the earlier 2000s, like, I like Michael Chiklis as the thing. I, I, I actually really like I like most of that approach. cast. So did you I, like at the time it, before he was Captain America? You liked yes. Evans? I thought he was, he was hilarious. He was cool as John. It's he's like the he's fire. Cool it's like John. this, but all over. Chris <laughs> Evans, Chris so Evans or Michael B. Jordan. Chris Evans was so good, yo. But Chris he Evans was, or Michael B. Jordan. Oh, Chris Evans, no, no question. <laughs> yeah, it's not that I don't like Michael B. Jordan, but Chris Evans, no. no. He's like it's like this, but all over. That line <laughs> always lives in my head when he did that shit. That shit is so good. You like you like Jessica Alba as Sue Storm? I didn't mind her, honestly. You know what I mean? Like, I didn't mind the movie in general. She wasn't the best, you know, it's Jessica Alba, but you know, was, the blue eyes were throwing me off. It was, it was you know, I liked her about as much as I like Ian Gruffled as uh Mr. Fantastic. I, and I'm looking I'm looking at the cast now, and then this yeah. is crazy for my people, my nigga from Nip Tuck. Y'all remember Nip Tuck? Yeah. Julian McMahon Doom, was right? Dr. Doom. Yeah, yeah. I liked him as Dr. Doom. Now, the one with Michael B. Jordan gets hated on so much, but I actually thought that movie was really dope up until they get their powers. And then it's a hot mess. <laughs> but, like, the way they showed them is, like, this they were younger, but they were still a family at school. And, like, how Dr. Doom was integrated with that crew at school was really dope to me. And then they get their powers. It's a hot mess after that. But that was the, M- Miles Teller as Reed, Kate yep. Mara as Sue, J- Michael B as Johnny, and then mm-hmm. Jamie Bell as Ben Grimm. But what's his name as Ben Grimm? Punk kits Doctor Doom into the uh, portal at the end of it. And <laughs> I don't even remember this movie, <laughs> nigga, Ben. This nigga drop kits this nigga Doctor Doom, like grabs him and like boop, like punches him, <laughs> yes. like yeets him through the fucking board. No, but like I, I dead ass do not remember that film. I remember Chris's Chris Evans one, Michael Chiklis and them. <laughs> that nigga punched him, dog. <laughs> they did remember they did two of the of one with Michael Chiklis. That's why you remember that. Oh, a, okay. Yeah, because okay. they had the second one with Lawrence Fishburne as yeah. Silver Surfer. Oh, funny fun fact. Another uh, uh, old school fan bros fact. We actually interviewed Michael Chiklis. What? And I missed that one too. We fucking did. We interviewed you did. I, I interviewed him. Yeah, I damn sure Where did. were you when I was doing all these cool ass interviews, bro? Oh no, yeah. You always I was get to do killing them. myself yeah. back there. So yeah. okay. But um, but yeah, so so they released again, they released the cast. We're happy with it. What what's going on with the phase now? Is everything gonna be driving towards this? I mean, we're also doing this whole thing with Deadpool, you there's, know, that the, the the Super Bowl spot came out. Like there's what's happening? yeah. Okay, we can talk about all that. There's a lot of interesting rumors, right? One the Deadpool trailer um has which just leads into one of the rumors. At the end of the Deadpool trailer, when Wolverine walks up on him and it's about and he's like, Give me a hand and he pops he the claws out on the claws, him. Yeah. There's Sneak. an there's an issue there's a comic book issue lying in the ground next to Deadpool. And of course the internet's already figured out what it is. It's Secret Wars number five. And that is from the most recent Secret War series. All right, now, very quick and short, as short as I can make this. There are two okay. main Secret Wars comic series, right? Okay. The main, the first one comes out uh, sometime in the 80s, and it's the one of the first big crossovers ever from a comic book company. And from okay. Marvel, it's definitely one of their first. So it's a 12-issue series of where all these heroes and all these villains in issue one get transported from Earth to this planet battle world which is comprised of all these other different planets and this being the beyonder who says i come from beyond if you kill all your enemies i'll grant you any wish and you know he just he shows that he has the power to do this by creating this world bringing them all here boom so they're all there galactus is there all these villains all these heroes doom the x-men magneto captain america some of the avengers all fantastic four Iron Man, all these chats, and it's basically a 12 issue fight. You know, they fight for 12 issues. A lot how... of dope. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, what up? Continue. I was just going to say, how's this fight happening when you have like Galactus level people? Well, there? Galactus. Why is it just is... not a one and done? Because Galactus is like, fuck all that. I know exactly how I'll get rid of these niggas. I'll eat the planet. So Max. he just so he just goes to eating the planet. So he's like building the machines to eat the planet while these niggas are fighting. Oh, he's sitting there building the 
machine. It's not an instant thing for Galactus. Well, it never has point. been. That's my point. Like, oh, man, yeah, that's and, why. I was like, how does that happen? But okay. Yeah, but then it's it's a it's a it's a great series. Like, you know, it's you should anyone should pick it up, you should pick it up. It's a great series because all kind of wild shit happens. Like Doom steals Galactus's power. Okay. Um, when he's trying to eat the planet and then gets goes to fight the Beyonder and then eventually steals the Beyonder's power, mm. destroys all the... Eh, well, I won't give all... It's, but it's dope. So Maybe that is probably fight. not... Yeah, but that's the probably not okay. exactly what they're... The one they're going to... Um, so not the 80s one. Yeah, I think that might integrate some of it, but are to now... Longer and shorter story, and the, there's a more recent one from the 2000s, uh, mainly written by Jonathan Hitman, you know, one of our faves over here, and he did this long run where he was doing Fantastic Four, then he did Avengers, and all this shit led up to his version of Secret Wars. And his version of Secret Wars, different realities are crashing into each other, what they call incursions. They mentioned this in the mm-hmm. Doctor Strange movie. Yes, they did. Yep, and so it's like these different realities of the multiverse start crashing into each other instead of existing in their own space. And so because of that, when one, when they two crash into each other, only one exists. So the Illuminati, who are like this secret organization of people like Professor X, yeah, who we also saw in that same movie, they get together and try and stop these incursions, because they're the first to know about it. Eventually, you know, everyone finds out and it becomes this war to save reality, basically, with Doom on one side and the Fantastic and Reed Richards. That's the whole battle. Like, the whole thing amounts to a philosophical debate between Reed and Doom, which is why I think they'll incorporate both of them because this one gets more mind and philosophical. Like, Reed says everything lives and Doom says everything dies. Like, that's Mm. how it starts. It starts with Doom saying everything dies. But that's not what it's, you know, Reed says everything lives, you know, first. Yes, everything dies, but everything lives. You gotta live to die. Yeah, and so that's the whole debate. I don't know how they can put that on screen. They do some philosophical shit. I mean, they could do that in a series. Just saying the words itself is is some shit. Yeah, I think they'll they'll have those lines. But so anyway, with Deadpool and this cover from that series... Which that issue actually involves the Molecule Man and Doctor Doom. Like that's one of the and the Molecule Man is another big player in this whole thing. I'm not even taking this plan, time to explain him or any of that Please shit. Please don't. <laughs> yeah, just know the name. So Doom is on that cover, and so because of that, people are saying that Doom might show up in Deadpool. There might be some more hints to him or something, which leads to the other rumor because of the whole reshuffling with Majors being out mm-hmm. and it no longer being the Kane Dynasty. People are the one rumor is that it might be Avengers versus X Men. Which would be a way to bring in the X Men and have mm-hmm. the X Men coming from another reality, which where is they're already fighting happening to, in the Marvels, where they're fighting to save their reality, and then we might see some of this in Deadpool because Deadpool is going through the Fox universe and all these other multiverses. So that might be why the TVA is even recruiting him to start this shit off that will eventually see come to form in Secret Wars, and then after Secret Wars, the whole thing is re- rebooted into one reality, and the X Men have always been part of the MCU. Boom, 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 boom. So that's one rumor that's out there right now, which mm-hmm. I think would be dope. Like, if they announce Avengers versus X-Men, it's, you know, the niggas is flipping tables. You know, the roof is doing, you know, like, you thought this Deadpool announcement was saving the MCU? Like, you said, I'm MCU Jesus? Like, Avengers versus X-Men, that's like Marvel just coming in, you know, oh, my God, you know, coming in with the steel chair. You know, that's one of them yeah. type of moves. Like, that's, yeah. 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 That's a big dog move. Well, you know, I'm also thinking about this whole thing because they still have not yet cast Doctor Doom, and mm-hmm. interestingly, Ben Med- uh, yeah, Ben Medel- right. Mendelsohn, who played Tal- Talos, and we know, mm-hmm. you know, Talos the Coon, he got <laughs> he got unalived uh, in Secret Invasion. He says, "quote He would almost give his eyes and teeth to play that villain to be recast as Doctor Doom." I don't see it happening. I don't see it but... happening either, bro. I mean, he, you would be great. But you also, you know. Yeah. And then it said Giancarlo Esposito. He also said he has an interest in playing that role. <sighs> that would be insane. But but that's another push. That's another he's, one. I'm, he's that's supposed a push. to be Eastern European and people are just, you know. people. I mean, not that he doesn't have to be Eastern European. but No, you know, he doesn't. He could but, literally be anything else. Um, well, I mean, that's, can, you know, part of him is running the country of Latveria. La- you which know? is also a made up country. Yeah. It's I mean, a made-up country. Black. He could be black and Eastern European. 
of a it native happens. country. <laughs> like it doesn't matter. You know what I'm saying? It's not like like is is there some is there some like German shit that he's doing all the time that he needs to be known no. as German? So that's what I'm saying. Like no, no. yeah, uh, you know, like no, is some Austrian shit he's doing well, all the time? I mean, like no, if you cast him that old, then you might as well go with you know uh, what's his name Ben Mendelsohn. But they're not gonna redo it because he's already too known as right. Talos. And right. no, I, yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't know if they're gonna go like you said that old. Um, but they're they don't necessarily gonna go young either. Like no. the cast of Fantastic Four, they're grown ass men and women. So and I that's the thing I was really hoping for uh, my man from. Uh, who's now in Saltburn? My man from Euphoria. Oh, the oh yeah, the the one that plays. Oh gosh, the one who yeah, the one who just hosted SNL. Uh, Elordi, Jacob Elordi, Jacob Elordi, yeah. Yeah, yeah I was yeah, really yeah. hoping for him, but he's too young to be a com- you know patriot. Why is Elordi too young to be doomed? Oh, he would be in a he would be he'd be insane, but but. He's too young to be Reed's homie. You know, that's the thing. Reed and him were supposed to have grown up together pretty much. They went to college together, et cetera. Like, that's, you know, they're, they've are they known each other forever. That's the He's whole beat. too young beat. to be Reed's homie. Let me see this picture of this nigga. Nigga, that this, nigga's this young. Nigga that's pl- but the nigga that plays, that's, pl- uh, uh, Joseph Quinn looks kind of, don't look that, look old, bro. What do you mean? No, no, not Johnny Storm's homie. Reed oh, Richards' sorry. homie. Reed Richards. Oh, yeah, Pedro Pascal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They well, did maybe it they'll right. switch that. Maybe well, no, they have this. They're ha- no, that's their friends. beef. Yes, yeah, the, the beef, beef is right. the beef is always right. doomed, thinking he's smarter than Reed, and Reed, Reed just and being Reed's like, Reed. No, nigga, I'm just yeah, here. I'm the man, and you're an asshole. You yeah. know, and that's what it really is. You know, Reed is kind of an asshole himself. Well, but then it then it could be somebody. It just it has to be someone in between. Yeah, it has to be someone. Who the fuck is between. that? Someone who looks a little older. It's, yeah, that's why I was. You know, when they were casting. I've been saying Jacob for the longest because I was hoping they were going to go a little younger yeah. with the Phantom Four cast. Yeah. Well, they figured all these years they did younger cast. They said, fuck that. We're going in the opposite direction. Like, I mean, they've been doing older cast. So Robert Downey Jr. ancient. You know, no, I'm like talking that. about for Fantastic Four. All of oh, the yeah, previous true, ones, indeed. generally speaking, with the exception yeah, true, of like, Chicklets and stuff, like, yeah. they, were, they were younger. I think Chicklets just looks older. That man might have been 35. <laughs> I have facts. Love uh, you, Michael. I, I love him, but he just, you know what I mean? So, you know, he, he got Morgan Freeman <laughs> face, you know? Oh. Like, so, look, <laughs> you know, certain cats got it. James almost, you know, a lot of cats, you know, they, you know, over your face since you like 28. All right. We got to, we got to figure that out. But, um, okay. That's interesting too about the rumors. Yeah. But that, they, have a path. they have several pathways. I guess the, the, the general point is they have several pathways to make this work and they've already opened up so many doors. Like, yeah. And with fantastic story Four coming, wise, I mean, Avengers could be, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't know, Avengers Galactus, that's not really a story, but, um, that, you know, and then you have Secret Wars coming, so Avengers versus X-Men would be a dope way to get you to Avengers, you know, at, um, Secret Wars. Like, that would be, you know, because that would start off the whole multiversal battle, and then you have the big, you know, then the X-Men and the Avengers come together for Secret Wars to battle whatever, you know, Doom or whoever, and, you know, mm. you got something there. I think that, you know, I think that's a lane they... It just means that you have to cast all these X Men very soon, and I think push up the. But they seem to already be pushing up everything with Fantastic Four. Like, well, that's all. That was already coming, but it's like now. It's like now nah, it's coming, nigga. And, you know. Okay. So yeah. Um, on the other spectrum of Marvel films, or or really Sony, mm-hmm. we have your girl Madam Web, and. <laughs> Unsurprisingly, it got some it, well, not always scathing, but interesting reviews. Um, I'll just read this first one that says, "Madam Web is one of the worst superhero movie in years and one of That's the most scathing. enjoyable." So had you in the first half type, but they said the most enjoyable. And then interesting love. Oh shout- wow, that, that's a goddamn lie. Interestingly enough, shout out to Charles Pulliam Moore. Uh, he wrote he, he, on the Verge. He wrote that it's like. Purposefully camp, like he said, like it's bad. Mm-hmm. He just said it's bad, but it's also purposefully camp. Like it harkens back to because the the film takes place in two thousand three, so it harkens back to that time. And when you think about it, the superhero films that came out in that time, they're known as classics now. But in hindsight, when you compare it to the type of storytelling you have now, they were not that good. But they're considered cult classics, right? And they said that Madam Web is the whole thing tracks like a like it's trying to be a cult classic. Yeah, I think. I'll be honest, y'all. I feel like there's been a lot of covering for Dakota Johnson in the press mm. for some reason, and it bugs me out because I don't get it. And I've also read a lot of, I've read whole reviews where they basically like this ain't it, you know. Yeah. So 
But we I know, I, I knew that. <laughs> yeah, and I think this, you, you can't call things camp. You know, they have to become camp, and you can't try and make things a cult classic. They have to become a cult classic. I agree. And a lot of those films from the 2000s just aren't good, like Daredevil, Elektra. There's a lot of trash. It's not good, but Catwoman. because it has nostalgia factor, people are like, oh, those were the days. Like, And they mean it kind of in a tongue-in-cheek ways, but they're also kind of serious. And that's the only, at least at least from a, from a review standpoint, that's the only saving grace this movie has had. But it has a 14%. Rating uh, <laughs> a fourteen percent reviewer rating on Rotten Tomatoes and like fifty six percent audience rating. Mm, out. So I already knew. I mean, honestly, I don't know how anyone saw the trailer and thought seriously and and you know, like like it's a very unserious trailer. Trailers, yeah. Uh, and it it for me, it just immediately gave. I am going to be a terrible movie for me. I don't know what the rest of y'all saw who thought, oh, this could be good. Because it, it was giving me Morbius light. And I don't want anything to be related to Morbius. So that little bit of relation alone was enough to put me off. Like, I don't know about this one. Would I have given it a chance? Sure. But it's kind of like, I told you so. I don't know. Yeah. No, I'm, I wouldn't have given this a chance. Uh, no, <laughs> I'm good. It, like I said, I've been, I've been feeling this whole Dakota Johnson cover up for a minute. I'm not getting it. Um, she gonna have to do better than this. And I really don't like when people do things like they do a movie and then afterwards they come out and talk about how the script was changed so much from what they started with. Like you knew this shit wasn't good. Like don't, don't do that. And, and don't, and don't throw the other creatives under the bus, you know, hold that L. You like, signed on to get like, this check. It just didn't work out. Right. Yeah. You wanted your mortgage money. Like, <laughs> yeah, don't don't do that. Don't do that. And that's why I don't that's why I've really turned away funny, like whatever to this. And these reviews that are trying to be like, no, it's you know, no, no, no. Call what it is, fam. Y'all want, you know, because people want access. And that's the other side of it. You know, and I'm like, nah, man, y'all miss. Are you and gonna may, see the film? I would like to eventually see it because like I talked about last week, I do love I mean, I've never seen Morbius more than once, and I doubt I will. But I did enjoy the Venom joints. You know what I mean? That was my shiznit. I and... messed with, like, as as good, bad as Venom was, like, I actually yeah. would mess with it. Like, if someone says, hey, oh, yeah. you got to watch this again, I'd be like, all right. Like, I wouldn't feel bad about it. Versus yeah, if no. someone said, you got to watch more movies again, I'd be like, nigga, why? So, that's how I feel. But, yeah. I, well, I, I mean, I'll watch, if I could see it for free, I'll watch it. I'm not paying for it. <laughs> Are you no. Hell <laughs> Oh, no. Moving on to something that I would pay for is a uh, yes. Dune 2. Yeah. I wanted you to hear your, because because it premiered, and I went, I mean, I know you told me over and over again, I gotta watch the first Dune. It's incredible. This, that, and the third. Now Dune 2, Dune 2, Dune 2 is out. And first of all, what part of the book or books is this based on? Or is this some other shit? Like, give me some more understanding of what Dune 2 is supposed to be about. I can't do I I honestly because I'm not that big a book fan. I can tell you that okay. this is there are from what I do understand, I think the first two or three books are written by the original author and then his son did the one after that, so he gets a little okay. off brand after that. But what the story they are telling is the story of Atreides is uh Paul Atreides, the and like I've talked about on other episodes, he's a messiah type figure. But what I found very interesting and why I like the first Dune so much is it definitely hinted at the idea is that he is a planted messiah and that his whole religion and everything that he's part of is false. And so I want to see how they explore that more in this one. And I just thought the first one was beautifully shot. You know, the production, everything, all the acting. It gets in. This is like Dune is a really great story that a lot of other sci fi is based off or has taken stuff from. It's also, as people like Lexi talked about on our show, uh, Lexi Alexander, and as Juno Diaz spoke about, it also liter- you know, literally takes you know, indigenous cultures and uses them. So that's why you know, it got a lot of flavor as well. So I really did enjoy the first one a lot more than I thought I would. Like, I'm about to rewatch it before this come, well, before I get to see the second one. It's like, is it like three hours? Yeah, it's solid. But it's, it's one of them, you know, it's an epic film. You know, it, it deserves its time. Like, it's not time wasted and shit. The shit is dope. Like, not so three hours not wasted. No, I loved it. Like I'll watch okay. it again. I can't wait to see it. And I can't wait to see the second one. And I like I was not that hype about it. Like I was I've never watched the I've tried to watch the original Dune and you know, usually just fell asleep on it or whatever. It just never held me. 
And knowing some of the backstory behind this, like how they did shoot in certain countries, but didn't hire people there. And so I was kind of like, eh, fuck these dudes. But then, you know, it's on HBO Max. And I'm like, let me peep this because everyone's talking about it. Chico Leo raves about it. A lot of people rave about how great this film is. So I had to peep it. And I was like, eh, it's pretty solid. <laughs> Damn, I really enjoyed that, Joe. Okay. Like, yeah, especially okay. when his mom starts calling him a fake messiah and all that shit. That shit was great. <laughs> oh, wait, his own mom's? Well, his mom is part of, she doesn't call him that, but she's part of the religion that's planted on this planet and you know she knows this the gene besseret and so she's you know like yeah she's complicit it's a it's a very interesting story wow yeah it's a very interesting story that's crazy yeah your own mom's bro like <laughs> yeah rough it's life. grimy it's a rough life that's what i mean like and it, it's that's what i say it's very like and i i wasn't the biggest timothy uh chalamet fan but he's great in it you know he's incredible um, uh, my girl doesn't get as much burn in the first one, but I know she's all over the second one and she's great in the little time she does have in it. His mom is fan fucking tastic. Oh my god, that woman playing his mom is so good. And you know, it's got so many people in it. What's his name is really good in it. Uh Jason Momoa is really good in it. Thanos, your man Thanos, uh Brawlin's up in there. You know, he's great. It's you know, it's a the I mean the set design, the production is incredible, just beautiful shit. Costume. It, and all it that. looks amazing. I will yeah, say from a amazing. visual standpoint, yeah. it looks great. But it the story and the acting, everything else is right there with it. And I can't wait to see the second one. So okay. I'm all I love it. Zendaya and she fucking yes. killed in that vintage Mugler uh yes. tonight. So yesterday. So yeah. Okay. Um another Rebecca sh- Ferguson. Yes. Rebecca Ooh. Ferguson. Okay. Eats. Okay. She eats. Eats. What? Okay. Oh, no, I'll just say it's time for a quick break, you know, and mm-hmm. then we'll be right back with more from the show. This is Yvonne Chapman. I play Javon on Kung Fu's CW. When I'm not on set, I am listening to For All Nerds. This is Niamh and Niambi. When I'm not busy doing the acting thing, the writing, drawing, illustrating, I'm listening to For All Nerds. This is Shannon Houston, writer on HBO's Lovecraft Country, and you are listening to For All Nerds. This is Malcolm Spellman, head writer of Falcon and Winter Soldier. You are listening to For All Nerds. It's Ehoma, writer for Lovecraft Country. When I am not creating, I am listening to For All Nerds. My name is Damon Lindelof. I'm one of the writers of Watchmen, The Leftovers, Boss. And when I am not sheltering in place, washing my hands, and sheltering from squid, I am listening to For All Nerds. This is Kate Heron. I'm the director of Loki, and you are listening to For All Nerds. And what's up, y'all? And welcome back to this episode of For All Nerds. As always, make sure you're following us on all of those different platforms out there. You know, all the audio joints like Spotify, iTunes, Spreaker, wherever you get your podcasts from. iHeartRadio, don't matter. Just hit that follow. You know, if you're watching us, you can follow us on YouTube, on twitch.tv slash For All Nerds. Just wherever you get your podcasts at, type in For All Nerds, hit follow, hit subscribe, do all that good stuff. Thank you very much for joining us, as always. And, um, you know, before we get out here, we still got a little bit more to talk about. I really do want to talk about this uh, Invincible Season 2 trailer. Yeah, uh, Yeah. about that. Um, Or Season 2 second half trailer. Which I feel like they're going to piss me off. (laughs) They're going to piss me off. I feel it. As an avid comic reader of Invincible, it's one of my favorite comics. We talk about this all the time. And I've even said this before. I felt like that there is a logical endpoint to the season with as much as we've seen so far that while I thought was logical and also a huge cliffhanger, I think it'll piss people off. And this trailer really hints at that moment there at the very end of the trailer, you hear in Invincible saying, I'm sorry. And that's a line from this scene in the comic that I've referred to before that I'm not going to spoil right now, but it's a line that he says is straight out of his mouth. I'm sorry. 
And there's another line that follows that. And that is it's a huge cliffhanger. And even in the comic, it was devastating. And you only had to wait a month to see what happened to him. So if they do that at the end of this season and we got to wait like six, seven months, I, I hope they don't. I'm hoping somehow. Do you think this... it's going to be like years wait? Like we waited two and a half years. Yeah, no, I don't think so. I don't think okay. they'll do that. And one, they're like, they bought a studio in Japan so they can crank out Stripebound. Right. Remember bought you said out. That. Yeah, they're, Invincible is, you know, high priority now. So I think the next season will be out by the end of this year, the latest. But. I think that's still a long time to wait, man, if they do what I think they're going to do, especially when there's I like I just hope they do that scene and then do the follow up scene before the end. You know, like, don't do that. Like, yeah, I I mean, like Angstrom Levy or Levy, he's he's coming back. Yep. Um, He's a big part of that. But I'm talking about. Oh, my God. I already, I already feel it. Like, I just... Yeah, he's a big part of that. And, that, and um, like I say, him coming back and then that I'm sorry line made me like... Yeah, so the sequins are back as well. And in that quick scene, you see them all over Adam, Eve, and, and another person. And they say that line, we told you we were too powerful, right? Mm-hmm. So that's a whole other thing. And I, that, I was like, these niggas again? Like, well, then we never really got rid of them in the first place, no. remember? Because that was that one that's been here this whole time. And that's the problem. But there's one of them. It, like when you said, who is that talking? That's all of them talking. That's they're all like of them a, talking, right? They're a unified mind. Right. And that's the thing. If one of them, if they get connected while they're with the Martians, they can't connect. But once humans did next to them, they can connect. And once they can connect, that's when they well, become they a problem. T- yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. we saw what we saw how like how where they came from, where they took over before. Yeah. So they were a slave race before that. I mean, they mm-hmm. were they were powerful, and then Martians made them a slave race where they couldn't connect to them because the Martians can transform. Mm-hmm. But with humans, they connect, and that's a wrap, and mm-hmm. there it is. And so that there, you know, and that's another one. That's Starro. You know, that's just like, that's all yeah. he does is repurpose concepts. Like, that's, you know, the sequence are just Starro. Just, just Starro, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, <laughs> it's just, I mean, I love this show so, so, so much. And it's just like, it, it's, I, I already know, like, I feel I'm already aggravated. Like, because I just know, like, like you said, they're going to bring it to a point where it's just like, and we're going to keep you holding you here for several mm-hmm. months on end. And you're just going to have to fucking deal with it. Yeah. And I just, in the ho- age of like getting shit immediately, it's just like, ah. Yeah. I just hope next season is longer than this because it's a lot to get through. And I want them to get through this show. Do I don't want them to episodes? rush through it. This is supposed to be the second season. I think there's four more like there were before. I think it's eight total, right? I mean, because this is so this season two, this is going to debut March 14th, um, which is my nice brother's good. birthday. Nice. But Pisces. Yeah. <laughs> but how many episodes? Oh, I think that's my nephew's birthday. Oh, is it really? Yep. Is you so, but are you saying this that's coming out is only four episodes? This tranche? No, eight episodes, right? Yeah, I think so. Because it was okay. four before. I think it's eight. I would assume. Total, you mean? Yes. God damn. So we got four more. That's what I mean. With the amount of time, like we were talking about, with the amount of real estate they have left, the logical end point is this cliffhanger that they did in the book. That was the end of an issue. That was the end of a very big moment. And because of that, I feel like that would be the logical end point right here. You know, because that was one of his best cliffhangers. That's like one of them cliffhangers. And the way they alluded to it in the trailer just really makes me like, oh, yeah, they're doing that. You know, that I'm sorry at the end of the trailer makes me like that's how you end the season. Yeah, and there yes, there will be eight episodes total. So we, yeah. as you say, we saw four, so that's only means only four left. Yeah, and where they're at two. right now is going to lead to that point. You're, there's a lot that's going to happen. Like you said, the Sequids. There's a lot of stuff with uh his dad and the Viltrumites. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the Viltrumites because he's on trial and all that shit. We get to see there's a quick shot of this dude on this bike shooting this ray gun. I can't remember his name, but he's basically this space rider. You. You're probably, I think you're going to see the issue where Mark, I mean, this, not the issue, but the episode where Mark reads his father's books. And because of that, you get to see all these different alien characters and stuff who will show up later on. Mm. Space Racer, I think his name is. He's got a gun that when he shoots it, the beam just keeps going. Like, it does, you know, it'll go through anything forever. Like on some Omega Beam shit? Yes, on some straight Omega Beam shit, wow. like forever. Yeah, so he's an ill character who plays a big part later. There's these monsters that show up that I think we'll get to see. There's a lot that you're going to get to see, but then there's going to be a bit. But that's the thing. Invincible is built. I mean, Kurtman, one of his great strengths as a writer is his cliffhangers. 
So yeah. no matter how they end the season, it's going to end on some what the fuck I need next season because he does that so many times. Like there are so many issues of Invincible where I was like damn near clutching the issue in my hand after I mm-hmm. finished it because I was so mad that I didn't have the next one. Did you have it? Did you go, Kirkman? Yo, no, there, <laughs> not this one. There is something later on where I wanted to kill. I was so tight at the end of the issue. I mean, it's, it's, it's like season three or four, you know, but I was disgusted. And then he fixed it in the next issue. So I was, you know, good. But I was, oh my God, it was such a, so he does it. You know, and there's several other ones I can point to where are like, ooh, that was a great ending. Ooh, ooh, that could be an end of a season right there. You know, so there's yeah. so many moments. Yeah. Okay. So, but I, I feel like I know where they're headed to for this one, and it's going to break people's heart. It's going to be, not break people's heart. It should be one of them ones like, God, it should be Cartman. It should be like that. Yeah. It definitely could be that. <laughs> God. Oh, <laughs> man. Yeah. It's definitely going to be that. Cause motherfuckers going to be tight waiting for this whole boy. Okay. Real, well, you know what? It's a good series, and I'm gonna be mad, but whatever. I'm gonna keep watching. It is what it is. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm all over it. Uh, it doesn't matter what they do. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Just yeah. like with the book, I was all over it. I said I wouldn't. It's like with like Kurtman is that good of a writer. When I was reading Walking Dead, when I was reading Invincible, there were several times in both of those books where I was like, "Yo, I'm never reading another issue. Fuck this dude." <laughs> and then I read them all to the end. Walking Dead, I've I stemmed through like the last ten or so issues, but. You know, because still, it's it's too intriguing. You can't just stop. Yeah, you can't like, stop. Who cares about how you mad? You mad yeah. me? Who cares? Let's keep like, reading. Let's keep watching. Like, let's get to where we need to get. Like, I mean, this is no longer spoiler because we're way past it in the, in the show and in the um book. But in the comics of Walking Dead, uh, what's his name? What's Carl's mom's name? I can't remember her name. She gets oh. killed, and it's horrible. And she gets killed with the baby. Like the baby gets killed mm-hmm, too mm-hmm. Yeah, in the comics, yeah. yeah. And so it's Judas and she's not survive. Yeah, and she's not some evil woman like she was in the show. They really played her character in the show. You know, you really get to know her and understand why she was with Shane and all that and all this shit. And so it's a devastating moment in the comics. And I was like, "Yo, fuck this book! Like, you just killed a baby! Like, fuck this book!" You know what I mean? But I kept reading. You kept reading. <laughs> and then when and then when they murdered Glenn in the book, I was like, "Yo, fuck this book!" That was pretty much it for me, though. I can't lie. Because I was just tired of the grossness and everything. And well, you, after well, you that, got I just skimmed through he it. Got, yeah. He got the thickest plot armor you can ever imagine for a character in the show. And then he, so. and then he got murked still. <laughs> True. <laughs> and that's when I was done with the show again. Like I was like, all right, y'all. You know. I was kind of done with the way he did not die. I was like, Nick, yeah, ain't that no too. way. Ain't that no too. way. But that too. that's neither here nor there. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then also, finally, the Vince Staples show. Uh, mm-hmm. That dropped... Today, right? Yep. That dropped today. Um, yes. First of all, Vince Staples wins. He can do yeah. no fucking wrong. The man is incredibly talented. He's fucking hilarious. So far. I mean, so no f- wrong so far. You know, hey. You're right. So far. I mean, but, no, let's, but let's, not, let's not put him on pedestal. As it stands, uh, you know, February 2024, uh, he, he, he's, he's, he's good in my book. So, yes. uh, you know, I, I fuck with him. I fuck with his creat- creations and things like that. And... You know, a lot of people have been starting to watch the show. I know you started. Um, mm-hmm. Expectedly, people are like liking in it to like Atlanta and, mm-hmm. and, and Dave and things like that. And yep. it does have that vibe. I mean, that's mm-hmm. kind of obvious in the approach because it's like a lot of random shit just happening. Yeah. Um, it's not like one. Well, maybe it's different here where it's just one continuous story, but it seems like a lot of random things happening. So far, it's Small pretty stuff. random. There's. I'm not even sure if there's an overall story so far. Yeah, like, is there? And, and that's fine there isn't, yeah. but I'm just saying, like, that seems to be that vibe. Yeah, I've, I've only watched two episodes so far. They're both highly entertaining. Like you, I'm a big Vince Staples fan. I think he's a great musician. I think he's a great, great artist. Musician. Yeah, his music's great. I think he's hilarious, you know, just in interviews, everything he does. And I loved him on Insecure. Um, I think the show so far is great. And... I'm a, obviously Atlanta to me is one of the greatest shows of all time. I'm not gonna put it on that level yet, but it's got potential. It's great after two episodes. I'm like Dave. I really enjoy Dave, and Dave's another one where I'm like, eh. I, Dave. You know, Dave annoys me. Little Dicky annoys me more. I know. As, you know, <laughs> as, but I still enjoy his show, and I can't front yeah. on that. And, and in fact, I want to make a point about this. Uh, there was a whole thing last week where I was talking about power, and I was like, oh, I wouldn't want to write on it because it's not something that really contributes to society, and that's. I want to make things clear. Like, I would write on power. Actually, I wouldn't want to write on power for other reasons, and that's mainly because I enjoy it so much. 
But I would like to be in the writer's room just to see how they do it. Because I see power okay. is so amazing how they just don't care. What's you know, with the it's 180? Like, no, it's all. That's what I'm saying. I just, I just wanted to make that clear. I didn't. I when I was rewatching that video this week, I didn't like it how that came like across. It sounded like you were like, I'm not like I was dogging power, and that was like, yeah. and I, and I'm the first like me and Janicia from uh, T with Queen and Jay were talking about it this week. Like she was questioning something. I was like, don't question the greatest show on television. Like this is the greatest <laughs> show on television. Do not quit. Like you and me both know we tune in every week, and it's the fucking most entertaining thing you can ever see, especially Power Raising Canaan. That is my joint. Like, I love that show. I think it's utterly ridiculous, but I think it's utterly ridiculous in the way that that type of show needs to be. In a soap opera, you know, dramatical way, it goes without limit. So that's why I just wanted to make that clear. Because I really felt like last week, you know, when I was rewatching that video, I was like, ah, I don't really like this. I really did not like how it came off in that. Like, okay. Yeah, it made it sound like, where it's like, oh, I'm better than that type of thing. No. I was going to say, it did sound like that. Yeah, and I would never say that because one, I don't think anyone is, you know, I think writing is, I think writing is difficult no matter what the type of writing it is. I think it's all <clears> fucking insanely <throat> hard. And I love power. And that's like, that's what really, when I was watching the video, I was like, I'm going to have to take that down because I just really did not like it. It was like, Ugh, this is not what I, you know, felt mm. like, no, because I fucking love that show, you know? Mm. I think power, the one with Tommy, is annoying because it's, it's the worst of them all. And I'm mad at that. Like, but that's because I love Tommy the character. And I'm like, y'all can do better. Like y'all, y'all should do better yeah. by this character. But yeah, yeah. No, I really wanted to make that clear. Okay, yeah. well, I, I, that's appreciated. And yeah. like you said, you you like what you saw when it came to the Vince Stable show. And and mm-hmm. interestingly, like in an interview, they say, "What were your inspirations for your vision for the show?" And he says, "As a kid, I remember watching the Annie Griffith show, and it had that absurd normality. Then Twilight Zone, Kidding, Barry, Coen Brothers films, and David Lynch. So yeah, all, all of these, that. all of these, he's he's." distilled into his show apparently um i'm looking forward to watching because like i said it just looked cool and i'm i'm a fan of his you know i I appreciate his work and the things his output so i definitely want to i definitely want to watch this that's wild i never knew that about the andy griffith show like the andy griffith show used to be on as a kid and it was so old to me that i was like i ain't watching this bullshit you know so i never Mm -hmm. i've never known it had that hyper reality because the first type of thing that i knew like that was i it's an old show too was um the Wild Wild West, the one that Will Smith remade as a movie, like mm-hmm. that shit was way before my time. But they would have reruns on when I was a kid, and you know, I'll never forget. There's that this was one a episode. remake. Yeah, it's a, it's an old show, and it was a uh, wild like mm-hmm. just like how the movie was in the West, but had like science fiction, steampunk type ish. Yeah, yeah. The show had all that too. So, but oh. I didn't know that, you know. So it's like one day I'm watching this show, and it's like I'm watching this western that I think, and <laughs> then. These dudes smoked these, um, like, they, they literally rolled up, like, wooly blunts. Like, they rolled up some coke. <laughs> they, it looked like cocaine, you know? And they had <laughs> and they had the tobacco leaves hanging, and they rolled them joints up, smoked it, and these niggas shrank or some shit. It was like oh, some, some Alice in Wonderland, Wonderland shit. shit. And so, and I'm a kid watching this, and I'm like, what the fuck? You know, what is this? <laughs> you know, I couldn't comprehend a Western yeah, where yeah. niggas suddenly started shrinking and stuff. Yeah, and it, you know, and it, I might have been sick home from school, so I'm sick laying in bed watching this stuff. Like, <laughs> what so is confused. this? Yeah, <laughs> you know, your mind's all addled on Robitussin and shit, and yeah. I'm like, what is going on? So that was like, I didn't know that the Andy Griffith did that, but I definitely know that obviously Twilight Zone, the Coen Brothers, um, the other uh, David Lynch, you know, all those are like that's big inspirations mm. for me as well. That's all. Do you shit. see that already? Oh, yeah. Okay. But that's Atlanta. That's the thing. That's what it's funny. That's what Atlanta uh, is when, sure, yeah. I, what, what did he first... Uh, I want to say that he called it X-Files with Rappers. Is what, um, it was either X-Files with Rappers or Twilight Zone with Rappers or something like that. That's what he described it as. Oh, so that makes all, sense. Yeah, all these things are inspiring the same type of people. And it was just... You don't get to see black people do this type of stuff. This and type then, of stuff has been with you yes. know, white shows. Yeah. Yes, and I love this, and and you know I'm also really glad to hear that after only two episodes, you're just like an immediate yes. You know, usually yeah. it takes a while to get into oh, things, no. and we don't have the time. So yeah. like, no, this it was, is no, good. It was, this yeah, because uh, especially on Netflix, like I I like that joint, um, the one with uh, what's her name from Everything Everywhere All at Once, Michelle Yeoh. Yeah, Michelle Yeoh, and it's her two sons. The sons. Yeah, yeah, and I and I liked it. I heard it ends not well, but it was like you said, it ain't a lot of time in this world. And I watched a few episodes, and I was like, eh, I might go back to that one day, but I doubt the it because there's just son. too much. Yeah, there's just too much stuff out there. If y'all like it, y'all like it. Um, 
Shout out to Toby Wan. He finished it and he said it's, you know, cool. My man Joe finished it. He liked it. He said it got better, actually, but it didn't hold me where, like, no, Vince Staples, I'm definitely going back and finishing the season. There's no question. Okay, like, yeah. yeah, I watched yeah. the first two and I'm like, oh, yeah, how I got it. You know how many episodes in the season? No, nah, I don't even know. I didn't even check because I didn't want to be, you know, mad when it was over. Oh, but, so you don't want me to tell you? <laughs> yeah, because I'm enjoying it. Like, I'm really enjoying it so far. Like, okay. Rick Ross showed up in the first episode. I was sold. Oh, that's the second. There he shows up in the second. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Ben. Come on, man. You've seen that in the trailer. He's in the trailer. I Maybe I didn't remember. Maybe All I right, wanted to well, be surprised. Well, Rick Ross. Boss. Boss. <laughs> hey, what's up, Internet and the Fan Fam? This is Tatiana King for For All Nerds, and I want to thank you so much for listening and watching the For All Nerds. Make sure you like and subscribe to us only on YouTube.